What's up everyone, Noah here, and today I want to talk to you about how to handle your red bags. What I mean by that is how you can work towards getting out of a trade profitably, even if you're severely in the red, like 30, 40, or even 50% in the red, as you can see on my screen here. The reason for this, as you're probably well aware, is that on May 19th, we saw a major correction in the crypto markets. If you were trading that day, especially altcoins, then there's a good chance that you're holding a pretty significant red bag or more. While Bitcoin made a 53% correction from the all-time high made in April, alts took an even deeper dive, as they usually do. And most still haven't fully rebounded yet, especially against the dollar. You're probably looking at my screen and thinking that this is an absolute nightmare, and I don't blame you. The good news is that there's actually a really simple and easy method to help you get out of the trade in profit, or at least significantly cut your losses. What I'm talking about are grid bots, which is one of the bots that 3Commas offers us in their lineup. Here is the GridBot page. So let's talk about what a GridBot is, and I'll show you a real example of how I'm using it to handle my red bags. I'll show you the parameters of one of my GridBots and explain how I came up with those parameters so that you can create them for your own red bags no matter what coin you were trading. Hey guys, Future Noah here to remind you that this video is not financial advice. It is meant for educational purposes only. Always do your own research before investing in or trading crypto. And now, on with the show. Gridbots work by buying and selling in predetermined price increments. These increments are represented by these lines in the grid here. You create a grid by determining the upper limit, lower limit, and grid quantity. The grid quantity represents the number of lines on the grid, including the top and bottom line. If the price moves up and passes one of these lines on the uptrend, then you will sell a predetermined amount of coin. If the price goes down and passes one of the lines on the downtrend, then you will buy the same predetermined amount of that coin. So a grid bot is designed to catch every price movement within the specified range. The advantage that a grid bot gives us over waiting for a coin to fully recover and closing a DCA deal is that we can most likely count on a decent amount of volatility as the coin recovers. Therefore, with a grid bot, we will profit off of a lot of smaller deals as the price moves upwards, drops back down, and does it all over again. Now that you know what a grid bot is and how it works, I'll show you one of my examples. Let's look at this Zcash DCA deal right here. Right now, it is about 35% down from my break even point, but I started a grid bot when it was about 40% down. My break even point for this DCA deal is about $262, as you see there. And the entire deal consists of 14.9916 Zcash. These numbers are important to keep in mind when setting up your grid bot. So now let's look at the grid bot settings and see how it's been performing. As we can see here, the Zcash price is somewhere in the middle of my grid, and this grid bot has made me $133 in profit, or 4.26%. Let's click this to bring up the chart. As you can immediately see, by all the buy and sell triangles on this chart that the grid bot is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's buying and selling Zcash in small increments, taking small bits of profit for me as the price goes up, drops back down, and goes back up again. When the price goes up, it sells. When the price goes back down and passes a previous line, then it buys those coins back. As you can tell, it has already done this a bunch of times so far, and that is exactly what I like to see. Because of all these smaller deals, if I were to cash out all my Zcash right now for USD, then including the profits from the grid, I'd get more USD than if I never ran the grid bot and just cashed out my Zcash at the current price. That is the advantage that the grid bot gives us. The hope is that as the coin recovers, there will be enough volatility that I will actually get into profit before the price fully recovers to the point when I would have been able to close the DCA deal. Let's take a closer look at the grid bot settings and why I chose these specific parameters. My upper limit for the grid right now is 261. It was actually 262.2, which was just above my break even point on the DCA deal. A good rule of thumb for setting the upper limit of a grid bot in this situation is to set it just above the nearest resistance that is right above your break even point. A resistance line is the TA term used for a price point upwards for longs or downwards for shorts that a financial instrument tends to hit before reversing. The more times it has hit that price in the past, the stronger the resistance. As you can see here, I just moved the chart back in time. My upper limit is actually just below the nearest resistance around my break even. But so far, this bot is still working out very well. As you run grids, you can make small tweaks to try to make them perform better. 
And that is why today I lowered my upper limit price from 262.2 to 261, and I'll be explaining more about that later in the video. It may be possible to adjust this bot to perform even better, but there are, of course, other factors at play. The ideal price to set a lower limit to is the strongest support level close to the current price. This might be above the current price or it might be below the current price. A support level is the technical analysis term used for a price point, again, downwards for longs or upwards for shorts, that a financial instrument tends to hit before reversing. Like the resistance line, the more times that it has hit that line in the past, the stronger the support. In my case, when I started this grid bot, I didn't want to add any additional funds, USD, into it. In my strategy, that's part of handling the red bag. But in order for the grid bot to work in this way, you have to set up your grid so when you start it, there are no buy lines below the current price. If there are, then when the price drops down there, you'll be spending more USD, which you may not have at this point because the correction has already exhausted your reserves. I started this bot right around here, and I set the lower grid limit to just above the market price at that time. Now that you have the upper and lower limit set, you have to specify your grid quantity. The grid quantity are how many lines are going to be drawn across your grid, including the upper and lower limits. You want to adjust the number here until your grid width is somewhere in the 2 to 3% range. And until you are seeing good hits on the smaller dips and spikes when you look at the previous uptrend on the one hour chart. So here we're looking at the previous uptrend on the one hour chart. And as you can see, I'm trying to align these lines here so that they just catch the tops and bottoms of these small dips and spikes. So it's all about getting as many intersections on these lines as you possibly can. You'll probably never get it perfect, but you do as best as you can. And sometimes you may need to adjust the upper and lower limit again to make sure that these lines align with the price patterns without adding too many grid lines. And that's exactly why I had lowered my upper limit price from 262.2, which I mentioned before, to 261. I found that I was catching a few more of those hits with that change. So once you're satisfied with how the grid lines are intersecting with those small dips and spikes and the grid width is ideally somewhere in the 2-3% to range, then we have to set our quantity per grid. This is how many of the coin will be bought or sold at each grid point. If you want to use the full or almost full amount of coins that were in your DCA deal, then take the number of total coin and divide it by your grid quantity minus 1. So I had 14.8. 9916 Zcash in my DCA deal, and my grid quantity is 20. So I'll divide that by the grid quantity minus 1. So divide by 19, and that gives us 0.789. And you'll see here that my quantity per grid is 0.788. It's a little bit lower because sometimes three commas will tell you that you have to buy some more coin in order to start the grid bot, even though you did the math correctly. And you can do that if you want to add more funds, but in my case, I just lowered the quantity per grid from 0.789 to 0.788 to get around that issue. If the price fully recovers and goes up and passes through the top of the grid, then I would be left with a minuscule amount of Zcash that I could sell at a profit manually. Some key things to keep in mind are that if the price drops below your grid limit, then you would have bought back the full amount of coin. Similarly, if the price passes the top of your grid, then you would have sold off the full amount of coin available to the grid bot. I mentioned that I edited this grid bot earlier today, a few days after I started it. Editing the grid bots after you start them can be a bit problematic, especially if you aren't able to add more funds, but it is still doable. It's very easy to lower the lower limit of your grid if the price drops below that lower limit. Simply bring that lower limit down, make whatever other changes you want to make, and you're good to go. Just make sure the grid lines look like they are still hitting those dips and spikes really nicely. Other changes can be more difficult, but my general rule of thumb is that unless you want to add more funds into the bot, you can make changes as long as the lines below the current price indicate the same amount of coin that would have been bought below the current price before you make your changes. For example, if before I edit the bot, I have these four orders of 0.788 Zcash below the current price, then I just have to make sure that that is the same after I edit the bot and that there aren't any additional lines above the current price. If there are, then you would have to purchase more coin in order to set those limit sell orders. That is certainly an option if it fits the situation that you're in. However, if you're trying to handle red bags and don't want to add more funds while you work yourself out of trouble, then stick with my general rule of thumb. I'm going to back out of this so I don't make any changes. And now let's take a look at some of my other running grid bots so that we can see what they look like. We took a look at the Zcash one. Let's pop open this Mana one. So this is MANA USDC. So here we see the action of this MANA bot. 
As you can see, I started it somewhere around here. I passed this first line, which at the time was a waiting line. Sold, dropped back down, bought, went below my lower limit. If I had caught this, I could have lowered my lower limit. Passed back up, sold, sold some more, looks like I sold some more, back down, back down, sold, down, buy, sell, 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 buy, buy, sell, buy. You get the picture. And this is looking really good. If I zoom in here, let's see. Okay, so it looks like we're catching these dips and spikes pretty well. We're catching them right at the limits. Sure, it could probably be better, but you're never going to be able to figure out exactly what the future performance of a coin is going to be. So you just have to do the best that you can. And I'm pretty happy with this. Looks like if these lines were a little bit closer together, I could have caught this little spike right there and then sold again. And then I would have been on my way to another sell. So that's one more deal or two more deals maybe that I would have had there. But you know, it's all good. If I keep seeing that happening, then I can edit this spot and try to fix that. Let's take a look at one more. Let's look at this link one. Uh, I love how this looks. Let's zoom right in. Okay, here I want to note something. So you'll notice that these triangles aren't right on the grid lines. And the reason for that is because I have edited this spot and changed where those grid lines are a little bit to try to catch those dips and spikes a little bit more. So as you can see right here where my mouse is, I don't, I didn't have a sell there because the price action didn't hit the grid line before I edited the bot. So I edited the bot so that it catches these spikes a little bit better to try to catch that action in the future. And you'll see this triangle right here is the first triangle that is back on the line. So that means that I edited the bot somewhere around here after this buy. It's very important to keep in mind that grid bots are opportunistic tools. They should only be used when you anticipate a period of consolidation within a range before breaking the top of that range. Grids should most definitely not be used if you anticipate a quick recovery where the price will shoot straight back into profit relatively quickly without volatility. If that happens in that case, then it would be equivalent to selling at a loss equal to half of the amount that you were down by originally. But on the flip side, this is still a super viable strategy for mitigating your losses and potentially getting back into profit. In my Zcash example, which I'll bring back up here, I was down 40% originally. And with my bot settings, if the price just shot straight up and passed the top of the grid, then my losses would have been cut from 40% to 20%. However, because of all this volatility, I am already well on my way to cutting my losses even more and potentially making a profit. Some other situations when a grid bot would not be beneficial are if there's no volatility in general and pretty stagnant pricing. You're just not going to close any deals or very few, and it just simply isn't profitable. And obviously, if the price continues to tank and never rebounds, this clearly wouldn't only be bad for a grid bot, but would be bad for any type of long bot or any type of long trade. This is why we make sure we only trade coins that we're confident in and bullish on overall. So I really hope this strategy can help you get out of some of the trouble that was started on May 19th or any future market correction. Please let me know in the comments if this video helps you out. I would love to hear that. Or if you have any questions, please leave a comment with your question and I will make sure to answer them. If you like this video or if it helped you out, please hit that like button and subscribe so you can get all of our future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.